Hi everyone, this is Will at Undo Media. In this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, I'll show you how to create screen pump effects like these, sync them with your audio or music tracks, and a couple other quick tricks to really make your video edit pop. Alrighty, here we are again in Adobe Premiere Pro. I've already got a sequence set up with the video clips you just saw in that intro, and a music track I'll be syncing my screen pumps to. And you'll see I've got some color-coded markers on this audio clip already. I added these markers right before each of the bass drops and a couple other big beats in my music track. And I placed them directly on this audio clip rather than the sequence timeline. This way, if I ever decided to move things around, these markers will stay synced to the same points in the audio. If I was syncing my screen pumps to some sort of action in the video, sports or action footage for example, I'd probably add my markers directly to the timeline or the actual video clip instead. If you only want to add one or two screen pumps, you may not want to bother with these markers, but I'll be creating a few variations of the effect and placing them throughout the sequence. So having these markers here will help me zip through things a little quicker. So let's make some screen pumps. I'm going to start at this lavender colored marker right before this big woo in the music. Okay, so her woo was clearly better than my woo, but let's just move on. I'm going to create all of these effects on adjustment layers for a couple of good reasons that I'll explain later on. So I'll come over to my project bin, click the new item icon and select adjustment layer. We'll click OK here and then drag that adjustment layer over onto my timeline. Next, we'll tab over to the effects panel and search for the transform effect, which can be found in video effects distort. I'll drag that effect onto my adjustment layer and nothing's changed yet. But over in the effect controls panel, you can see we now have this transform effect and a bunch of settings options. The one we need for our screen pump effect is the scale control. We're going to animate the scale value with keyframes. We'll start by clicking the stopwatch beside scale to set our first keyframe. Then move forward two frames using the right arrow key on the keyboard and increase the scale. I'm going to go with 135, which will add another keyframe here. Then we'll move forward three more frames and click the reset parameter button to add one final keyframe at the default value of 100. And now we have a very basic screen pump. And we could play around with the space between keyframes and the scale to create different screen pump intensities or durations depending on the look we're going for. But I kind of prefer how I had this originally, so I'll just undo back to that point. Now the real beauty of using this transform effect is that we can easily add some motion blur to make this look even more realistic. If I uncheck Use Composition's Shutter Angle, and increase this shutter angle value, you'll see that we've added some motion blur to the effect. The higher the shutter angle value, the more motion blur we'll get. And I'm going to crank this all the way up to the max, which is 360. So now we've got a realistic motion blur throughout this effect. And I'll play this again at normal speed. So that looks pretty good. Now I could just copy these keyframes and paste them further down the timeline to add more screen pumps. And if that's all you need, you're good to go. But I'm going to show you how to add a little natural bounce or reverberation to this effect. And if you stick around, I'll show you a neat little lighting effect you can add to all this to really make it pop. Since I'll be reusing these effects throughout my sequence, the first thing I'm going to do is right click this adjustment layer, select rename and call this AL for adjustment layer, single screen pump. Then I'll select the layer, hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and drag it over to one of my other markers to create a copy. This is right before a big bass hit in my music. Let's give that a listen. We'll stretch this adjustment layer back out a little, and over in the Effect Controls panel, I'm going to delete everything but the first keyframe. For this screen pump, I'll move forward just one frame and enter 120. Then two more frames and click Reset Parameter. Then forward another frame, enter 118, two less than last time, forward two frames and Reset Parameter again. And I'll continue that way, decreasing by two every second keyframe, 116, 114, all the way down to 102, and one final reset. I'll expand this scale control so you can see how this is going to play out. If I make this row a little bigger, 
you can see how these peaks sort of trail off over time. And I can give this even more of an elastic -y finish, a more natural bounce, by stretching out some of the spacing between keyframes towards the end. So now we've got a really nice, really organic looking little bass pump effect going on here. So let's rename this screen pump variation. We'll call it Big Bass Pump. And we'll change the color of this layer to Caribbean. And from here, I can copy this adjustment layer, make a few minor adjustments to keyframes, and create a variety of unique screen pumps to match the different beats in my music. And while I speed through this, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Boom. Let's give this a play. All right, so that already looks pretty cool, but as promised, I'll show you one more quick little effect that I find can really add to this. Let's drag another adjustment layer onto the timeline, then go back to the effects panel, search for Lumetri Color, which can be found within Video Effects, Color Correction, Lumetri Color, and drag that effect onto our new adjustment layer. Now, Premiere Pro has a dedicated Lumetri Color workspace up under the Color tab here. But this is going to be so simple, we won't need that. In the Effect Controls panel, within the Lumetri Color effect, we have our basic correction tools. I'll expand that, and I'm going to click the stopwatch beside Exposure and Contrast to set a couple keyframes. Then I'll set the Exposure to 5 and the Contrast to 20, which will give my video this highly overexposed look. Now, depending on your footage, you might want to play around with these settings a little. But for this clip, this will work just fine. The whites are a little blown out, but this is kind of what we're going for. So we'll come back over to the Effect Controls panel. Click the right arrow on my keyboard twice while holding down the Shift key to move forward 10 frames, and click Reset Parameter for both of these. Then I'll select these keyframes, right-click, and select Ease In. So what we've done here is create a quick flash or strobe effect that will start strong and taper off very quickly. And when we combine this flash effect with our screen pump, we get this. Now I could have just added the strobe effect to the same adjustment layer as my screen pump. But if I keep this on its own layer and label it, I have a little more flexibility to create some unique effect combinations. One of the ways I like combining these effects, and this works great for music videos in particular, is to alternate screen pumps and strobe effects on different beats. So they play off one another like this. I think that looks pretty good. And now I can use all these handy markers I set up earlier as reference points to copy and sync my various effects throughout this sequence. And remember how I mentioned earlier that there were a couple of reasons why I was adding these effects to adjustment layers rather than directly on the video? Well, with my effects on separate layers, I can move these video clips around all I want without having to reposition the effects or edit keyframes. I can even replace these clips with entirely different footage, and all these effects stay synced with the music. And with that, I am out of here. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and happy editing, everyone.